are three things that trigger favor number one mercy the first thing that triggers favor is mercy when god wants to favor you he must first show you mercy psalm 102 and verse 13 thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time to favor her yea the set time is come psalm 102 verse 13 favor is triggered by mercy if you want to enjoy divine favor then god must show you divine mercy you can't enjoy divine favor without divine mercy when divine mercy comes favor shows up in Romans chapter 9 and verse 15 God said I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy when Bartimaeus saw Jesus coming Bartimaeus knew that for him to receive a miracle mercy must speak for him so in Mark chapter 10 and verse 47 Bartimaeus cried Jesus son of David have mercy on me when mercy showed up God turned the Bible and Jesus stood still anytime mercy shows up God stands still and when God stood still he said go and call him child of God it is not the works of your righteousness it is the mercy of God anytime you want to experience favor what did you say Lord have mercy Lord show mercy in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 he said let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace grace to help in the time of need child of God when mercy shows up upon the man's life it doesn't matter how people see you it doesn't matter how they look at you but they are surprised you are getting blessed they don't understand look at a man like David he was not a perfect man but in first Samuel chapter 13 and verse 14 God said is a man after my heart in Acts chapter 13 verse 22 God says a man after my heart when mercy he picks a person it doesn't matter the opinions of men it doesn't matter the descriptions of men when mercy shows up it triggers favor somebody say I receive favor somebody say Lord have mercy God was speaking I remember God was speaking in 2nd Samuel chapter 7 I think verse 15 he was telling David concerning his son Solomon he said David I will not remove mercy from your son like I remove it from Saul. So what made David better than Saul was mercy. Mercy! It triggers favor. It triggers what? Number two. The second thing that triggers favor is the fear of God. Somebody say the fear of God. Say the fear of God. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. The fear of God. When the, the fear of God is not to be scared. It's not about being scared of God. It's to consider God before you do anything. Somebody offends you. You want to respond. You consider God. Somebody does a thing to you. Before you take a step. You consider God. You, 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 you always put that in check that how will God feel in our church I call it a website WWJD what will Jesus do in this situation what will Jesus do in this situation I find myself how will Jesus react Psalm chapter 34 verse 9 he said there is no want to them that fear God those that fear him cannot lack any good thing. One man met Jesus and said to Jesus in John chapter 3 verse 2. He said no man can do these signs except God be with him. No man can do what you do except God be with him. How can we do these miracles? He said except God be with him. So how can God be with me? In John chapter 8. If you read verse 29. Jesus said. He that sent me is with me. My father has not left me alone. Because I do the things that pleases him. Many of us. No fear of God. So you want to get money by all means. Whether you stand on the road. You don't care. Yeah, this money. We will make it in this Europe. Anywhere money is. We will make the money. This money, you don't care. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 11. As Patrick seated 
earth on earth and accept it not so we see that get riches but not by right he said he shall leave them in the midst of his days and he shall be a fool in proverbs 20 proverbs 20 21 the bible says wealth inheritance that is gotten hastily the bible says at the end it shall not be blessed when you get inheritance hastily hurry you 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 hurry to get money you hurry to get well no fear of god in your heart the bible says at the end such inheritance will not be blessed when a man proposes marriage to a girl and he knows he's not going to marry that girl he knows he allowed the girl's heart to be on the relationship she will put her money she will put her time she will put everything and he knows he lied to her he has a wife and children in nigeria but he pretended that he's a single man he doesn't have anybody and he's excited she's doing all she wants to do and at the end of the day he abandons the lady i now go to church he said god has forgiven me oh really the person you offended you have not apologized the person who said you broke you have not apologized you think god will forgive you there is no way god will not punish you for hurting somebody like that for allowing somebody to put a heart the same thing with a woman when you know you won't marry a man you collect his money you collect his cash you squat in his house you stay with him there's it, it's not only men that womanize some women manize a lady came to me very funny girl remember our church came to me said daddy i want to talk to you i said okay talk you know how that no it's serious matter i said you end up saying rubbish rubbish she came to the office with a paper five names she said that they helped me choose ah I said, what is your business? How did you become serious with five people? How? Why get yourself in this kind of mess in the first place? She said, Daddy, you don't understand now. That don't understand. This one used to pay my school fees. This one used to do this. This one used to do this. I said, oh, all of them have helped you. He said, yes, sir. And I called my PA. I said, give me a knife. I said, lie down on the table. He said, what, sir? I said, I will share you to five places. I will give your head to one. I will give your neck to one. I will give your hand. He said, that if I'm confused, I said, you must be confused. After eating money from five men, you are looking for direction. You will get confusion. Because you think God, you think you can use, you can use people and break their heart like that? Fear of God! Fear of God! That you cannot conspire against a person because you fear God. Somebody hurts you, you know how to fight back, but you fear God. You fear God. Because when God fights for you, He fights deadly. You fear God. You fear God. You fear God. That no matter the conspiracy against you, now God fight. You imagine Bible says if your enemy is thirsty, give him water. Ah, me, my enemy is thirsty. Water. <laughs> He's hungry. Give him food. Ah, enemy. There are two kinds of enemies. There are enemies who are envious. They can't kill you. They are just jealous of you. Those ones, Bible says, love them. The ones the Bible says you should kill release judgment on are those who are after your life the ones who are just envious who are just jealous who are just petty uh, see you look at you uh, look at there are people today who don't like you and they don't know why they don't like you so why do you hate me i don't know but i don't like you why I don't just like you. What did I do to you? Am I communicating? Very crazy life. And by yourself, I know a woman who was not talking to the husband for a long time. And I now ask the woman, anytime they want to sleep at night, she will wear three short nika, two jeans, and one big boo boo on top. So the man came to my office. I said, What's the matter? He said, The woman is keeping malice with him and i said why he said for six months he said the wife has not allowed her allowed him to ahead uh -huh. as was ahead uh -huh. he said papa you know now my wife has not allowed me to ahead uh -huh. as was ahead uh 
And I call, I say, my daughter, why are you doing this? Say, Papa, hey, look at this man. Of all the, uh-huh, uh-huh. do you have a child? And that's what's the matter. And she, <laughs> she did a drama in my office. He said, doctor said that my husband's pen travels very slow. <laughs> in my office, he said, travels very slow. So I now stood up. You know, I, I joke a lot. I said, you said the pen walk like this, walk like this, like this, or they walk like this. He said, no, Papa, it's the first one. I said, oh, so they walk like this. They walk like this. He said, yes, sir. He travels very slow. I said, show me again. And he said, this is his pen. We spoke very slow. So what happened? Let me tell you what happened. What happened? Anytime the husband is on top of her and the husband just ejaculates, he will push the husband and raise her leg up so that the sperm can travel very fast. So, so why do I sit around in my office? I tried, I laughed and laughed. I said, so tell me again, how does it travel? He said, no, Papa, it's not, it's not fast. This, I said, does it travel like this? Like this? Or it travels like this? He said, no, Papa, it's the first one. I said, so this man travels like this. Like, I needed to make the office very calm so I can handle them. He said, travel like that. He said, yes, sir, yes, sir. That's how it travel. And he's telling me he want to touch me. So every time I'll be raising my leg up. He said, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. My leg will not surrender. I will not surrender my leg. I will not surrender. I will surrender again. I'm tired. I told, I told. <laughs> Don't mind me, this is how I preach. <laughs> I say it as it is. So, I held his hand and I held her hand. I said, hug yourselves. They hug themselves. They say, Papa, we'll hug him more, but that doesn't mean. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with you? Come on, go back and do it. For by strength shall no man prevail. One day, the man came back. We finished fire night. The woman just came and lay down. The man started greeting her. How are you? The man said, fine. <laughs> he said, I know what you want. Do what you want to do. I want to sleep. In fact, she was even relaxed. While the man was doing what he was doing. She was, she just sleep go. Don't forget because the team travel <laughs> like this. Ten months later, baby boy, baby girl. Why? Because the fear of God entered into their midst. Ten months. I dedicated their baby. So it's not about the travel or how it's travel. So to connect to favor, number one, number two, number three, sacrifice. When a person, do you know when a when a person is sick, when they say oppression is critical. If not, they will give you tablet. But one, they say you have to be operated, especially abroad. Abroad, they operate for nonsense. Very annoying. What's happening? They feel pain. Ah, they will tear you. Very annoying. They, are, they operate for nonsense. About members in our church who, they who live abroad, they will come and say they want to operate me. I say what? He said my Britain. I said you have to operate you for that. He said no drugs you can take. He said no. I said we will pray. They are not touching your body. They want to push. They push up people like animals. Because there is health care, health welfare. So they must tear your body. A child is not coming out, they caught a the woman. So fast. In Nigeria, before they, they do CS, <laughs> they will beg the husband in the office phone. Come and sign. He has done to text me. <laughs> they will look for him. He's in Uselu. <laughs> he changed location. Before they he agree for them to tear him, but yeah, so he had to save the mother and the baby. Yeah, you don't accept such things. That is a lifestyle. When I became a pastor, I <laughs> before I became a pastor, I was already a Christian. I was in Lagos. A boy was preaching in the bus. He preached nice message. I liked the message. After preaching, he stood. He said, "You know, this is the work we do. You have to help the work of God." Ah! I didn't like that part. I was angry. I, I called him. I said, come. I put money in my pocket. I gave him money. He said, thank you. God will bless you. I thought he would want to sit down. He went back. He said, like I was saying, we have to help. Hey, God. I didn't like it. I will see pastors. When they want to call for sacrifice and see, they will read plenty Bible. 
plenty Bible to encourage people, encourage people, encourage people, encourage people. They will give plenty testimony to encourage people. For the, I said, no, Lord, I don't want to be a poor man. I don't want to live a life that will be depending on people. And God said to me, then you must be a giver. He said, because many pastors are stingy. He said, so you must be a giver. So I made up my mind to be a sacrificial, stupid, outrageous, voracious, volatile, combustious giver. I made up my mind to give like a madman. From 2004 to 2019, I've given 406 cars that I've given, not motto, cars, machine, not motto, not motto, cars. Am I talking to somebody here? I've given houses, I've given lands, I've given properties. Why? Because when you do that, anything you cannot give, you cannot outgrow. Money is nothing to me. I have no value for money. I'm saying this for the Almighty God. I have no, if you give me a billion euro now, I will share it for people. It lost value to me. There are many people that got that money and they hold it like goalkeeper. I told the brother in church, the only way to get his attention is money. If he's counting money, if you greet him, you respond with money. That's how he's counting. 15, 16, 17. He said, Brother Joe, where do you say 19? No, my brother, 19. 21. 20. <laughs> the heart, anything that it can leave you can't come to you. It's a love life. The love life. Love life. The love life. The love life. A pastor was in the crowd and the Lord said to me, he called me by, pro by prophecy. The Lord said to me, give him a house. I asked him, I said, what's your problem? He said, house rent. God said, give him a house. I said, eh? I will pay his rent. The Lord said, no, give him a house. Uh -uh. Full house. What now? And when he came out, I sized him. He didn't look like house. The guy didn't look like, he looked like rent. He looked like rent. He resembled rent. He did resemble landlord. The shoe was Seleto Peleto. You know Seleto Peleto? That shoe that carries sand. If you give him one week, he give you one trip of sand. That kind of shoe. The, you know the bed was like a suicide rope. You know those kind of bed. Then the tie was like a serpent. You know those tie you wear and you cannot pass a bush path that look like snake. All those tiny tie at the middle that look like snake that if you are passing bush that's how snake will be pushing you and if you ask them why are you following me they say see my brother for your neck see my brother that kind of that kind of tie you know so i look at god said give him two flats i called him and i told my wife i said god said i should give him a house my wife doesn't question say go ahead and do what you want to do so i gave the man a building and <laughs> after giving me a house sunday he went monday he went by the next Sunday again, that's what he said. The boho is bad. Uh. And I, I, I said, okay, take money, fix the boho. Two flats. And God, in 24 hours, God gave me an estate. Somebody walked to me and said, God says you give me an estate. And he gave me an estate in Lagos, on the island. And I'm lucky or so. Can I surprise you? Gave me that estate about five years ago. Till I speak to you now, I've not seen the estate. I've not gone to look at it. God called me to preach, not to be an estate agent. I've not gone to look at it. I don't even have sent people put tenants there. They'll come to me. I say, okay. They say, you have not checked it. I say, I'm busy. I said, just come around. Just look. I say, look what? What I met in this world and I'll live in this world. Am I carrying beauty to heaven? Discover that people that are truly rich. I was sitting with Dan Gotten one time and he brought out his phone. It was a Blackberry. Oh no, Blackberry Boat 5. Do you know the generation of Boat 5? I said, Allergic. Now this is this what I use, only one. Poor man! You see their phone. Who get me? You see their phone. That's how it's big. They have everything. They have iPad, they have iPod, they have uh, iPhone, they have laptop. You see poor men, they are always busy. When they dress, it's busy. When they do things, it's busy. These men don't value things. They just eat small, eat small, they walk away. Poor man, he will lose bed. It's my day, my beauty move. 
am i talking to somebody here when you place value anything you, it's nobody nobody's we talking you I, i'm a give up I, I give like a fool i give like a fool i give like a fool my wife has come many times she said you give people heart attack oh. I said, well, how can you just call widow? You give her five million. And that's a woman that has not seen 50,000. She will die. Oh. He said, just call people. He said, Tee. He said, you want to kill people? I said, to her, I said, because I give what I feel. I give what costs me pain. I saw a widow. I said to her, I said, mommy, the Lord said, I should buy you a car. The mistake I made, I said, select the brand. He said, okay, sir. On Sunday, I will answer you. She went to her children told her first son they did not they did not just give her the brand of car they took the picture of the car and when they brought the picture i said oh, no, wow, oh. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. why did i not just buy a car for this woman and the lord said give it to her i saw a widow dancing dancing the lord said build a house and why i was okay i will do that he said buy a car i said okay he said then give her a driver to drive her till she died am i talking to somebody here and i gave her and the thing is that people like that don't die quick because now they are comfortable one day i was i met an elderly pastor he's from abiyakuta and he was praying for me and the lord said to me every month give him a hundred thousand till he dies ah. after prayer and i said sorry sir how old are you sir he said he's 71. hey that's okay so I started asking him questions about his family. He said their family sometimes they get to 90. Hey. <laughs> I see 100,000 to 90. Oh, Lua. Oh. What kind of thing is this? Well, now I said, How will I do this? So I said, Okay, I'm going to do that. So what happened was, I started giving him one month, two months. So sometimes I'll just say six months. Sometimes I'll say one year, 1.2. So somebody was praying for me. He's a businessman. I was praying with somebody. All of a sudden, he stood up with the wife. He said, God told him something. I said, what is it? He said, God told him to be giving me one million naira every month. Forever. And I now said to him, I said, okay. And in my family, my mother's father died at 136. <laughs> my father, my grandfather from my father died at 98. So I said to him, no problem. He said, forever. I said, no, we're not going to die quick. <laughs> no problem am i talking to somebody i did it for a pastor what are you telling me what are you telling me? so when you talk about sacrifice not offering human hair is human hair is how much depends they say lent and um, it varies what's the Brazilian, then um, Indian. There's something they said. They said it depends on the length and and the quality. Okay, maximum and average. A good one, long quality. Good one, average. How much? That's what they wear, and that person carries that thing on the hair, and we hold five euros often. In the day of trouble, you will call on your weapon. It's a shame. What I can give to God, Second Samuel 24, 24. David said, I cannot give to God that which costs me nothing. When you do this, you attract favor. It's a wisdom that people don't have. So when you are talking to people like that, I sat down as a man of God. I sat down many years ago and I saw what pastors don't do. Many pastors don't pray. Many pastors don't fast. Many pastors don't study the word of God. That's why a pastor can preach message for one hour. You only write one scripture. So I have to do what they don't do. I have to start studying my Bible. I woke up 3 a.m. this morning. I studied the seven. 29 chapters. Just stop this, stop this, stop the match what I should mark. So when I stand, they just flow. My first daughter asked me, Daddy, do you cram scripture? I said, No, I eat it. I don't.
don't memorize scripture jeremiah 15 16 he said i found your word and i ate them and they became a rejoicing to my soul psalm 36 verse 9 with thee o lord is the fountain of life for out of thy light in thy light shall we see light when you begin you do what they don't do as a preacher of the gospel when they say giving you sacrifice you are not a message to be collecting your life is not wired that way it's not wired that way it's not wired that way one day bishop david oyedipa went to meet papa idaosa late idaosa and normally the house will give him money this time he went there our bishop said take our bishop said open under the bed draw the carton of money he said no sir don't give me money teach me how to make money i'm just saying empty your account the man cleared everything in tears and did that every month for one year today we know who he is and there's some people that you know when i started giving cars one pastor called me he said i pass you too <laughs> We don't do this work before you. <laughs> that is why they dash me to that. Even Father Christmas, these people are using your head, though. Using your head, they are using your head. You are giving money to people. Shine your eyes. Gather this car, sell them. Invest for your children. Apostle, hmm. Apostle. I won't deceive you. It sounded like a good advice. I'll give out cars. Give land. I'll get something. I'll give. Later, I started thinking. I said, ah, "My children, it's true." No, I'm going to be frank with you. He stopped. I said, "It's true. It's true." And the Lord asked me a question: Who brought the children? God. Who has been taking care of them? God. I said, "This man, your advice is useless." Till today, I give him money. Him that they are not using his head, he's still poor. No, he me me that they use my head. People collecting money from me use my head. I'm blessed. I still give him money. The last time I gave him a jeep, when he came to collect the jeep, I said, ah, Bishop, oh, our Bishop, oh, people that are stingy, hmm, their children, their children. I pity their children. He said, I know they laugh at me. I said, No, I know they laugh, oh, they remind you. I said, Happy birthday. I gave him a jeep and I walked away. Why? Because anything you give, favor comes. You know why God blesses men that give? God knows it is hard to give. Uh, it's hard. How can you carry, carry 5,000 euro? Then from your account, you collect 10,000. You drop on the altar. They'll look at you like a fool. Especially when you are dropping on the altar of a pastor you don't trust. There's a place you drop when you look at the pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got to a point they stopped giving me things. When they give me, they'll say, give it to mommy. Give it. Because they know if they give me, it's going there. Somebody gave me money. She knelt and said, Papa, I beg, I beg, not that person. As what's your business? You have given me. He said, I beg, I beg, Papa, use it for yourself. I said, no problem. So as she turned, I said, hey, someone was asking me for 200. Come, come and take. He said, hey, I said, Papa, I, I said it before. Papa, I beg now. So most don't give me. They wait till I'm entering the car on my way home. When I'm going to the office, people are following me. They don't give me the seat. They wait. When I'm going home, I've entered. I said, Papa, enter car. Enter. When I enter, I say, Papa, take. Oh, yeah, close door, close door, close door. <laughs> Why? That is how favor comes to you. When you sacrifice, I'm not talking of offering. Something you give, you feel it. When you sacrifice, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 20. Sacrifice is the food of spirits. When a person sacrifices, spirits are invited and you enjoy favor. Number one key to favor. Number two, number three, when you put this together, people begin to wonder how come you are so worried like an eagle? How come you are so worried like an eagle? He said, Gather my children, Psalm chapter 50, verse 5. Gather my sons who have entered the covenant with me by sacrifice. When you leave him, leave him. When you sacrifice from your heart, your heaven opens. Opens. I was in South Africa. A pastor cleared, sold his car. While I was coming, met me at the airport. I saw money in the envelope. I said, Why is it? He said, My wife and I, we sold our car. I said, Really? He said, Yes. I said, So why did you sell the car? I said, We are led. And he dropped the money on my hand. While I was, I went to church to minister. The other, the second day morning, we are driving. He said, I don't know if you can just drive through our side. I said, Okay. 
You see, there's a hall that we desire, but we don't have money to pay. The hall is down. Another building is like a shopping mall. Another is like a shopping mall. Newly built. So we drive, we're driving, and we got close to the place. I said, is this I said, yes. I said, wind down. I stretched my hand and I held his hand. I said, we possess this hall for you. In the name of Jesus. We drove. Few weeks later, God connected him to the owner of the place. He went to pray. The Lord did a miracle in the man's life. The man called him, called the wife, called the first son. I said, we have agreed to give you this property. Dash as a seed. Not rent. Dash. Bought the shopping mall. Bought the building. Everything dashed. Can the money for car buy that? I give you this testimony. Many of you have heard me share before. Preaching second time in South Africa. I was ministering. And there's a young boy, a young guy in the crowd. Anything I say something that touch him, he will stand up. Tell him else. He will raise his leg. He will raise one leg. Tell him else. He will sit down. And he behaves. Initially, I was getting angry, but later I started enjoying it. Tell him else. Once, twice. So, you know, when there's too much noise in the place, when it goes silent, you start missing noise. When it stopped, we started missing it. We stand again. Tell him else. He will sit down. So people around him, you know, members can be very angry. Now no, you did yet. Sit down. You can see people angry. He was like, He will sit down. Second service, second night, second day morning. The Lord said to me, call him out. I called him out. The Lord said to me, tell him to give everything he has. Now, child of God, I'm very. I, I there are things that are hard for me to say. I started battling. How do I say this thing now? How do I say this? And I told him, God said, give all you have. He put that in his pocket and brought out rand, 50 rand in the whole world. He said, This is all I have. I look at him. I said, Tomorrow now, this one will go and tell people, This man of God made me give all I have. He won't tell them how much. So he came. I said, Drop it. He stood on the altar. He was looking at me, looking at the money. Looking at me. I said, Drop it. Everything. I said, Yes. Look at me. Look at the altar. Look at me. So I walked away. I kept on preaching. So when he sat down in the evening, I was expecting cables. There was no cables. All I preached, I was expecting as a brother. Are you happy? Are you okay? The brother said, Yes, he's fine. No cables. He was looking at me like this. Look at me. Watch me like this. I'm sure in his mind, what he must be saying was, Oh ye thief. Holy. I'm sure I didn't say that verbally, but the way he was looking at me in his mind, I could read. So I just ignored him. I was laughing. I said, Look at this one, 50 rand. You are looking at me. If, if I can even give you your money back, sir. So I did that. Nine months later, I, I went to preach in South Africa. I landed at the airport in Johannesburg. A car. I was going out. I saw a car. So the person pressed the button. Beep, beep. The car didn't open from it, opened on top like this. So we had to enter from the top. So when he opened, I shouted the blood of Jesus. So he said, ah, Papa, you have not seen this kind of car? I said, it is where? If I say I've seen the car, I'm lying. If I say I've not seen it, I'm a bushman. So it is where? <laughs> so I just said, it is where? And we enter the car. He would drive, he would look at me. He would drive. He said, Papa, you, just like, you forget faces. I said, forgive me, I don't know. He said, you can't remember me? I said, no. And he screamed. I said, but your stomach, it looked big this time. Belay has come. Not be so you build. Now money never come. Ah. You think you are beautiful? Let money come. Some of you look at yourself in the mirror and you think you are not beautiful. You are. It's money. When it comes. So what happened? What happened? I said, what happened? And he narrated the story to me. And it was detailed to be my protocol. He was the one carrying me in his car. The first service was head. Second service in the evening, head. And the next day in the morning, I noticed, focus on me. He's offering their dropping. This is not sacrifice. Focus on me. I, I, I noticed, I noticed as he was, I was carrying him, his face changed the second day morning. Second day morning, his face changed. I said, why did your face change? He said to me, say, Papa, you have not called sacrifice the way you do me that day he said come you have not done it i said no that thing we don't do it all the time oh god has to lead us this one i'm not led he said be led though be led when you did that my life changed so i'm prepared be led i wasn't led despite all he said so i had to tell the people what he said and the crowd came out 
to sacrifice child of god anything you cannot give god you cannot become bigger than when i began to give cars i became bigger than cars i began to give land i became bigger than land i began to give i think the only thing i the only thing i can't give now is my wife and my children there's nothing that has value nothing i mean nothing am i talking to somebody here